we go and do some extra running at the end. <clears throat> and it's in twos. Want to see a winner. But he's there, Nicky. But hey, in pairs and I want to see a winner. It's the cross box line run. Start on the sideline. So it's near 18 and back, near six and back, far six and back, far 18 and back, long buster, far dead ball line and back, and I want to see a winner. So I'm thinking this will be interesting to see how these lads are fitness-wise compared with the lads at Everton. So all of a sudden then, Kagawa had been trained with the first, but he'd been out for a month. He comes across and says to Warren, and he goes, um, can I do this extra top-up fitness work? And Warren said, yeah, there were 13 lads training, including me. So he goes, yeah, you can run against Baz, <laughs> who looks about frail and about 100. So, oh, God. So we were last to go. Anyway, the first six or seven races go eyeballs out. But he, come on, come on, come on. And then all of a sudden, me and uh, Shinji go to our marks, like, you know, and I've always been a really good runner when I was at school. And every club I've been the best runner at, like, you know, I'll be out on the grass tomorrow at 63 running and that. Mm. And... Uh, it was unbelievable. We started off there, back, there, back, there, back. And I felt great. And you know, when you have that kind of out-of-body experience. I thought, this is my day. This is my day. And I could hear Shinji starting to breathe and croak a little bit. And all of a sudden, now all the lads are laughing and shouting. <laughs> anyway, we hit the last line. I've now got to go across to the far touch line and back. And I say in the book, I'm like running on air. And I get to the far line and I can hear him spluttering. I say to, my, I say to myself, I'm sorry, Shinji, you seem like a really lovely guy, but today's my day, it's my first day. And then I say, like, I change gear, and that phenomenon whereby you can lift a 100-ton truck off your kid, that kicked in and I glided home, one by about 10 yards, and everybody was laughing and joking and that, like, you know. So that <laughs> How was did mad. Shinji take it? Oh, he was laughing as well and that. <laughs> He'd been out for a month, so I let him off with that. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> I say in the book, just when things can't get any better, it's my first day at Man U. I'm going in and Sir Alf, uh, Sir Alf, God, Sir Alex yeah. Ferguson, Sir Alex Ferguson's there was Tony Strubick. You'll know Strubick's great guy. Yeah, yeah. And he, he, Sir Alex holds the door and he goes, come on, Mick. And you come, Mick. Come on, Mick. Come on. He, and he goes, I was just telling Strutters about your book, Mick, <laughs> and how you slag sports science off, which <laughs> I don't. But I thought to myself, oh, my God, Sir Alex Ferguson has leafed through my bloody book. Yeah. And that yeah. was the start of this kind of, Love affair I had with the guy, and I said it. I said yeah. my book. I thought he would be miserable, sod, shouting, moaning, ruling by fear. But when you actually sit down and quantify that, you can't rule by fear for 25 years. No. And people who rule by fear get great results for six weeks. But after your seventh bollocking, trust me, I've been there as a player, it doesn't work anymore. And then the results, and there's a lot of managers who go from club to club, do really well for 10 games, and it all goes to SHIT. Yeah. And that's when I started looking at Sir Alex. And I was there for a couple, these last couple of months. And I'd look at him and I'd sit with him and he'd be talking about the coffee. One day I was getting a coffee and he goes, hey, mate, get us a coffee. And he, and he goes, guess how much his machine was? I yeah. said, I, I don't know, £2,000. He goes, it was £12,000. I said, why? He said, I'll tell you what, it's £12,000. <laughs> He's explaining everything about it and the coffee <laughs> bean and that. But you know what else as well, Si? <clears throat> Bear in mind, he's probably the most successful manager of all time. Yeah. He'd, come, <clears throat> he'd come and sit with us and he'd talk or not and listen and smile. He'd hold forth or not. It wasn't about him. You know, he'd listen and somebody else's story and laugh at that. And, you know, the old um, hackneyed thing about knowing everybody's name. He yeah. did know everybody's name and it wasn't forced. It was genuine concern for people. And I consider it incredibly lucky. And I say in the book, mm -hmm. on his last day, he was walking around and people were in tears and that. And me and the 21s were training on the other side of the, the little stream that you have to cross to go to the first team. He'd come over and he called everybody in and uh, it was a really warm day. Anybody who sat there and Butty and Wadden were the first team, were, were the 21s coaches. And I say in the book, Jesus Christ, how am I here? This is like the Sermon on the Bloody Mount. And Sir Alex spoke. Oh God, I feel it. I feel it. Yeah. About talk about it now. Sir Alex spoke about the club and what it meant, and he goes, you, "You know, lads, he goes, this is a special club, and he goes, and the reason why Nicky and Warren are so hard and, and demand only the highest, because if you want to cross that stream to the first team, that shirt's glorious, but it's heavy, and that's one of the heaviest shirts in the world, and only a special kind of person can pull that shirt on." And I'm yeah. sitting there like with yeah. <gasps> gasping, like, you know, breaking down, thinking, God. And it's that same thread we discussed before. How am I there? 
how am I here this day on Alex's last day at Man United? And all through my life, Simon, this is why I wrote the books. I seem to be there at the sharp end, that kind of historical end of things like, you know. So it was an amazing day. 